Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. Nah. Rest in 101, class is in session Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek I mean these guys making the killing with no competition Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed They cannot be beat, take a seat Watch them do they thing on the MIC Face defeat, they cannot be seen like JC Oh my goodness, it's in killing spree yeah? Oh, this is... The Panda Man from Panda Land, Falaba. You're listening to Andrew, Pat, and Rocky. Wrestling IQ 101. Whoa. Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Wrestling IQ 101. When I'm not hosting our podcast, I'm usually at collarandelbowbrand.com. That's right, Collar and Elbow is the only place that combines wrestling with street attire. I know what you're thinking. I want to look fashionable too, and I also want to save 10%. So head over to collarandelbowbrand.com and use the promo code WIQ101 and look fashionable and save some money. And now, on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew, and Wrestling IQ 101 can be followed on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. You can listen right here on the B Plus Player Network or the YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. And today, I'm sitting with job security guys, uh, Officer Malcolm and right. Officer Ronald, uh, the head of security. Well, I was at one point, but you know, I'm going to make a transition actually, because I, now the job security is down to two people. I mean, okay. I consider Officer Malcolm my equal. Okay, so you guys yeah. are equals. All right, cool. Uh, I guess we'll get, we'll get into that a little bit later, why you, know, you guys downsized and stuff like that. But let's talk about the humble beginning of job security. Let's talk about that fateful night you know you, you know uh bobby wayward's in there you know he's having this huge you know battle every month with caq and, and you guys come in right so well, it was it started like the idea of job security started um a couple months before then mm-hmm. it was like um bobby wayward was in a had a match with danny moth and then like we were just a couple of guys just sitting in the back and we wasn't really like doing that much Mm-hmm. So then, um, actually, it was Kevin Matthews and Pat came up to us. It was like, hey, we need security guards for um, this next match, for this match. And they had, like, this idea for Moff to just kill a bunch of security guards after his ma- after he loses to Bobby Wayward. Mm-hmm. So we were a couple of the guys there. So while they saw Moff beating them, all, all those guys, Kevin Matthews came up with the idea for... What if um, these security guards come up and they be um, security guards for Bobby Wayward and like actually be like jobbers for him? <laughs> so, <laughs> so like nicely, th- right? Yeah. He, <laughs> well, yeah. So he he tossed the idea around with us and we're like, all right, let's let's do it. And it started off with like seven or eight people <laughs> because okay. if you look at that uh, show, there was about like seven or eight people where the um, moth killed. Mm-hmm. So all of them was going to be a part of job security. But it dwindled down to four people. So then it became me, Alexander Lasco, Jimmy Romer, and Ronnie. Yeah. And then um, that was, we debuted at Starland Ballroom for Bobby Wayward. Well, what happened was that first, that first match against Moff, it was like job security wasn't even a thought in anyone's head yet. It was mm-hmm. just like, all right, one and done thing. Which I, I was doing my own thing at the time. Malcolm was doing his own thing at the time. So I'm thinking, all right, this is one night only. And then the job security idea came up. I'm like, well, this is probably for the new guys. There's no way I'm going to be in it. Yeah. And then I am in it. And I was like, all right, you know what? Maybe I do need a little refresh or, you know, gimmick change, I guess you could say. Repackaging, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And then our first night was um, a January show in Union for Russell Pro. And we weren't with Bobby yet. We were just kind of sitting around ringside. We weren't introduced at all. But the first night we were introduced was uh, February at Star at Starland, as being Bobby's security team. Yeah, I remember that. You know, and that that was cool because, you know, I remember you were like guys in like the battle royals and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, those rookie battle royals they have, and and that's actually kind of like a weird thing because the last one they had uh, in Rawway, you know, you can kind of see the glimpse of the future. You know, you guys, you, know, you might not know it at the time, right? But 
you know, you're just looking at these guys, and you're like, who are these guys? But then there's, like, glimmer of, of hope that people come back and they keep seeing you. They keep seeing what you guys do at Rawway. They see what you did at Starland. Um, you know, but when you go out there that first time and you're, you're announced as job security, you know, you know, what's going through your guys' head? You know, are you nervous? Like, I mean, is this going to get a reaction? Are people really going to, you know, yeah, take to us? I I was nervous, but really excited because I knew that Bobby was his champion. So I knew that, like, we were guys that was in the back. Like, we didn't really, we were still coming up. So we really didn't have any that much to do. Mm-hmm. So I knew uh, with them pairing us with Bobby, not only are we going to get major heat because it's, like, residual heat from Bobby, but we're also paired with the champion, which means we're going to have more time on the shows, which... We're not going to be sitting in the back all the time. We're actually going to be doing something. We're going to be put in the major storylines. So it was exciting, but it was also nerve-wracking, too, to be out there, right right there with the champion, right in the main storylines. It was, it was nerve-wracking, but it was also exciting. It's like we're, here, like, we're in, our, like, in the main spotlight. Mm-hmm. And to hear all those people, how they reacted to us was just amazing. Yeah. It was like, all right, now we got to take the ball and run with it. <laughs> Yeah. For me, I would say at first there was an element of patience that was needed because honestly, like I was like, all right, I want to be wrestling, but I realized that I'm in a spot here where I could grow and become a freaking a star in this company because Bobby's the top guy right now. He's the top heel. Mm-hmm. Being aligned with him is incredible, an incredible opportunity. And lo and behold, we did just that. So at first, you know, I just had to be like, okay, I'll be security for now, but we'll go somewhere with this and. Sure. You know, how do you, you know, you, you alluded to the word jobber before, you know, how do you turn that around? How do you turn that ship around and say, you know what, we're here for an impact. We're here to, to progress and not just be enhancement talent for, for you know, Bobby or, or for his, you know, his victims or something like that. How do you turn that ship around? Well, just with our talent, just in the ring, we just try to, so we know we're going to lose sometimes. We know that we're going to get beat up, but... Mm-hmm. Like our the way we go about it, like we we don't like in our minds we're not gonna lose. Like in our minds, this is a <laughs> job. Like we're about to do our job. Okay. And we're gonna attack it. So we go to it. Like I guess we show people that we're gonna like go a hundred percent and not lose in our mind. But even though we're gonna lose, get beat up, it's like the way we go about it is different. You know. Yeah, you go down mm-hmm. swinging, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. I don't know about you, Malcolm, but, like, I didn't think Job Security was going to last past 2017. Really? Honestly, I'm like, this is going to be a stepping stone for me to get somewhere else. It's going to be cool for now, but, like, you know, I never thought that Job Security would, would evolve past being jobbers. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> uh, that's what happened. Like, okay, we, we, we beat this fucking label of... Can I curse? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we beat this label of being jobbers. <laughs> And um, yeah, I, within job security, so that was pretty cool to see happen. I wouldn't, I would never have expected that. Yeah. Well, you know, Brodus Clay, right? He's been the bodyguard for or security for Snoop Dogg. You know, um, if you guys had a wrestler or a, you know, famous celebrity, who would you want to be the bodyguard of security to? Hmm. I never thought of that. Me neither. Uh. Yeah. I mean, you could pick well, anybody. I mean, anybody in the world. Uh, anybody? Yeah, anybody. Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm sucking right there. Oh, man. I would pick, like, Daenerys from Game of Thrones. You know, I wouldn't mind oh, walking yeah. around there all day. <laughs> I, I, I would like to see how, like, it is being around him all the time. And oh, just seeing, sure. like, like, his creative mind and, like, just how crazy he is. I think we'll see a lot yeah. of different things. Yeah, I'm sh- I bet. Well, you know, if Mandy Rose or Kelly Kelly needs a security guard, I'm I'm offering Ooh. my services. So. I, I, I would, but then my wife would kill me. <laughs> oh, true, oh, true. <laughs> all right, so all right, that's cool, Vince McMahon. That's a cool option. You know? Yeah, you get to see how the boss thinks like and stuff like that. Maybe yeah. get a contract. I don't know. Oh yeah. Well, now now you can jump shift to the Con family too, just in case. Oh, yeah. right? <laughs> he seems pretty laid back, right? Like, yeah, he does. That's right? what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like he feels. I feel like he could just like stop like in the middle of the street and just play catch with you and just be like, yeah. like, be like this is like a normal thing for him right yeah like, he's like he doesn't care like you know, he's it's like cool that. that he's a fan and like 
I, I, I'm actually excited about AEW and everything that's coming up. It's like it's really good for the business. Yeah, sure. You know, exactly. it has to be. You know, and it gives people more opportunity. Right? You have your impact that's on TV. You see guys like Follow Bob, KM Flourish yeah. in there. WWE and NXT, those guys like Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, these guys yeah. are where you guys were not too long ago, and now they're flourishing over there. Uh, you know, it has to give you guys some hope to know that. Yeah, and it also it opens up a lot of opportunities on the independence for us too, because all those guys are going to AEW, MLW, yeah. New Japan, Ring of Honor. Then where those guys are going up and they're getting contracts, it's like well, these independents are going to be looking for. They're looking for the next generation. They're looking for people to fill those spots that are already being filled, uh, was filled and moved on. So it's like, that's exciting for me because that means more bookings for us and more eyes on us to show what we could do. There's sure. so much opportunity I feel is coming up in a short amount of time. Like when I first broke in four or five years ago, I was like, all right, I'm going to make it to WWE. I have to make it to WWE. But now, whether through experience or how the business has changed, I'm looking at it like, well, no, you don't necessarily have to go to WWE to be, to be successful in wrestling. Would I love to be signed to WWE? Absolutely. But if I don't, there's other avenues to be successful here. Sure. And I know I've noticed too, like, so if you don't get signed by WWE and you go to ROH or you go to Impact, that door just opens up. It used to be closed for those guys. It used to be, you know, well, we don't want these, you know, these smaller promotion guys, you know, like, but not that Impact is smaller, but look at guys like Robbie E now coming through Abyss, you know, now these guys have a home in WWE. So, yeah, I mean, one door closes, another one opens, right? So, yep. Uh, I mean, let's talk about this, guys. You know, when you're not wrestling, right, what do you guys have in common with each other? Uh... I don't know. Really <laughs> yeah, it, it's Malcolm and I. What we have in common? Well, this is wrestling related, but uh-huh. Malcolm and I started training at the same school around the same time, like late twenty fourteen, early twenty fifteen, and like after a while, time went on, and I, I just looked at Malcolm and like you and I are the only guys left here from this time period, yeah. and that's pretty cool to see. So that's mm-hmm. why I feel like it was kind of fate that we got paired together, but you know. As people outside of wrestling, we're kind of like, Malcolm's 30 now, I'm 22, so we're at different points in our lives. Like, Malcolm's about to be a father and a husband. I just oh, graduated really? college. Mm-hmm. All right. So, <laughs> that's cool. But at least you guys have the same mindset that, you know, we got to be better for the team, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I can text them with my crazy <laughs> ideas, and like, <laughs> sometimes they're crazy, but then like, we we collaborate, and we um, work through it, and I know that he'll, like... Like, even if he doesn't like the idea, we'll get to around the idea, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we'll mold it into, like, something that I want or something that we both like, you know? Yeah. Sure. I guess the yeah. thing that bonds you is wrestling and creativity, it yes. sounds like. You know, let's talk about some of those vignettes you guys have done on YouTube. Um, oh, usually, yes. Usually, you know, whose brainchild is that, usually? It started off with... All right, so let's go back to um, when we started beginning. So, I... I strongly believe that job security, job security, prosper and got better because of our feud with the Beach Bums. Okay, Absolutely. true. true. Uh, if we didn't have that feud with the Beach Bums, I don't think that we would have lasted as long as we have. So, with um, the Beach Bums, were a couple of guys who were just coming up, just like us. So we, it was it was just like perfect that we both were like met each other because it was like. We all wanted to prove what we got, you know? We all wanted to prove, like, hey, we want to be on these shows and we want to prosper together and we want to, like, like have the best matches ever. So we started collaborating. All of us started talking. And um, that's when we started coming up with the vignettes. We was like, you know what? Let's make this a big rivalry. Why not, like, start doing promos? So... <laughs> We were wearing all black <laughs> with our job security shirts. On and the then beach. We, we met on hey, a beach. On the beach. You took over the In beach. July. <laughs> yes. In July. <laughs> <laughs> so then we, we were talking all back and forth, and we came up with some silly ideas. It was like, no, we can't do that. But it was like, let's do whatever. We'll, we'll just do whatever. And it was the craziest ideas, but... We're on the beach where it was packed, and we're doing all this goofy stuff, and it was just like, it was just perfect. So then from that Beach Month feud, we just took those ideas for those promos, and we just like, we took them for ourselves, and we was like, you know what, let's just do it for ourselves. Let's do it for job security, and like, let's have fun. 
because they were getting the um, following and everybody was mm-hmm. loving them. So it's like, let's just, like, everybody does the basic wrestling promo where they're looking at the camera like, I'm going to get you, blah, blah, blah. Sure. So it's like, now we're doing something different where it's like, it's interesting. It's kind of like a mini TV show series and it's funny and everybody loves them. So. Yeah, I mean, I found them funny. The, my favorite one is uh, with Sean Donovan. Oh yes, yeah, so. anything with him I love. And, and we wasn't we wasn't building up a match. We wasn't building up anything. It was uh, just like coincidence. We were just like all standing around. It was like, hey, let's do a promo, and it was just like, it flew, and we started throwing balls at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, those with Sean were totally off the cuff, but it was like it was something like he saw us and he's like, I have to get in on this, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, work. Happy yeah. to- you know, yeah. he's wearing like the neck brace too. Like he just—he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, he really didn't get stuff. that hurt. Like he's just over milking it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I never took like a beating from Jake the Snake, so I don't know. That's really, <laughs> but it's funny, guys, because you know you talked about not going too far, and this is going to be just a couple of weeks kind of thing, maybe months, and and this is taking you guys all over the place from WoW, GTS, Monster Factory, WrestlePro, OTW, and XWA. Um, this has been a worldwide, you know, like, you guys are, you know, you guys are making moves, you know? Yeah, and I feel like now we're still, like, building upon it. Like, like, like it's good that we're getting, like, like, we had all those before, but I feel like this year is, like, the actual year where it's just expanded. Like, I felt for, like, last year... That we was getting a little stagnant, and like we was like, we were just like um, just like like going like doing nothing and like being stagnant. It's like we was just doing the gimmick, but I actually like, I had to look at myself and see like what was I was doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? I dropped a bunch of weight, and I was like I took them more serious. And I was like, you know what? We got to get more bookings. We got to get out there. We got to get these eyes on us. And it had to do with also with AEW and like the um, wrestling business getting big. But I was talking to Ronnie. And I was like, "Hey, we gotta, I gotta step up, and like we have to step up." And it started with me losing weight, mm-hmm. and then it was just like once I started losing weight, I started getting better in the ring, and then once I started getting better in the ring, it's like all these ideas started coming. It's like, "Hey, we could do this. Hey, we could do that." And then it was just like, "Let's just reach out to these promoters and see if we could get on these shows and show them what we got." It's been a slow uh, progression, but I think it's been s- kind of steady in a way. Because, mm-hmm. like, 2017 ended and we were pretty much just at WrestlePro. And I was like, well, I feel confident enough in us now where, hey, guys, let's go places. And we kind of started doing that in 2018. And like Malcolm said, so we're in the middle of the last year. He dropped a ton of weight. So fucking proud of him. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just this year, I mean, starting to get out there more, I think. Sure. You know, it wasn't hard, you know, going from singles to knowing that it's going to be four of you guys and you got to have to find a way to gel together. Was that hard to do? It was kind of hard, but then yeah. it was, it was, it's funny because it was like we all four had different personalities, mm-hmm. but for some reason it just, it just clicked. The dysfunction is what makes, <laughs> is what made job security, I feel like, yes. at, at the beginning. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> and that's one thing I love about you guys, because it looked like four, you know, and it was four random people, pretty much, you Absolutely, know, yes. and, and the fact that, you know, you guys are still kind of, like, starting out, and and you had, like, a rookie, and I was just like, this is hilarious, like, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just seemed to work, you know, and it was cool that you guys were paired with such another uh, odd team in the Beach Bums, right, because, It was know, a perfect mess, it, it was like... Was these super serious guys versus like these kid friendly goofballs you know it's <laughs> yeah, like we're trying to stop the fun and they just want to have fun it's like it was just a perfect mess let me ask you this though did you guys ever think that you would outlast the beach bums you know uh because now they're all broken up <laughs> yeah of and, course we knew we were gonna outlast them <laughs> 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 i always knew it <laughs> You know, but even though they beat us so many times, you know, but we won in the end. <laughs> yeah, you guys won the ultimate prize. You're still well. Yeah, you guys are still teaming together and stuff like that. It's awesome that you know that you guys have not faded away. Um, let's talk about losing some members, right? Alex was the first one to go. What happened there? Uh, just um, a lot of family stuff got in there. Like 
it, I know it's hard to like, get wrestling to balance work life, uh, like your regular life with wrestling. Mm-hmm. Like there was a couple of times where I had to like step back, uh, step away, because I had to get my life situated because of work or like everything is like all right. I gotta take some time and like get really really focused before I come back. And that was hard like, on me because I I can't function without this man. <laughs> <laughs> so I know how hard it is to like try to mix both, but then you gotta find that balance. And with sure. Alex, it was just like, it wasn't, he had so much going on with school and work and all. He just had a bunch of stuff going on. So he just told us, he's like, hey, I'm going to have to step away because I have to focus on my life, which is very understandable. And like, I love that guy. I, I, I hope the best for him. Like, I know that he's getting married and everything's going good for him. But like, we understood that he had to step away to like get everything like situated. And hopefully one day he comes back. Yeah, some positive milestones, it sounds like, for him. He's yeah. a great dude. He's doing so well for himself. I'm proud of him, and I'm happy to have had him as part of the team. And yeah. I love hitting him with a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it was at the Christmas episode, right? Like, it, was, it was just yeah. a crazy idea that we batted around. It was like, all right, we're doing this. <laughs> I was like, guys, we got we to gotta run with Alex. What do you want to do? And Alex was so, we, nobody really had any ideas. Alex goes, what if I get hit by a car? It's yeah. like... You know, All right. I, you know what I loved about him? Like, he was the sentimental one of the group, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you yeah. know, like, kind of naive and, and easygoing. And you guys were like, no, I've got to stick to the rules and be strict. And he's just, like, kind of devering off. He's like, he's kind of got it. And he's like, kind of doesn't. But, yeah. like, yeah, you guys, like, that character was so perfect, you know, for for how how you guys were progressing. You know, it was awesome to see mm-hmm. That was the fun part, just developing, you know, our own unique personalities within the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when Does that help you when, you know, because you guys had some experience, you know, you, you were doing different characters, yes. and so were you. Yeah. And you know, does that help you, you know, put that stuff together, like, later on? Like, th- does that pay, you know, does that help you progress, like, hey, you know, I did this one time, and now I can do this again, or this is the yeah, work that time? Yeah, like, um... Oh. It's like when you, when you do things in the ring and you get a reaction, you're like, all right, I can use that. And then sometimes when you do things and you don't get a reaction, it's like, all right, I'm cutting that out. So, like, yeah. anything you do, it really helps out. Like, even when we do uh, promos or vignettes, it's like I use the megaphone and, like, I see, like, people like it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to start using that more. Or if people start hating it, it's like, you know what? I've got a reaction. I'm going to use it. Again. I don't care. <laughs> So you, know, you you do things and then you get a reaction and you see what works and what doesn't work and it helps out. Along those lines, I think like later, once we were going with job security for a little while, that was when I stepped back and realized, okay, no, I did need the repackaging because like this is what it's supposed to sound like. Like once I saw the buzz we were getting, mm. you know, like wow, this is the best. <laughs> this is what I needed. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, it's funny because within job security. You know, you've had your own moment, too, just recently at WrestlePro. You got in the ring with the UFC guy. Yes. Uh, you want to tell that story real quick? <laughs> How that came so, about? So, Kobe Covington was in the back. And then, around this time, he was trying to gain... Um, he was trying to get the attention from the UFC because he wanted to go against Tyron Woolley. Because Tyron Woolley was the champion at that time. And Kobe Covington was, like, number two. But he wouldn't ever get the chance or the opportunity, so... The, uh, Kevin comes up to me. Kevin Matthews comes up to me. He's like, hey, we have this idea where um, Kobe Covington is facing uh, Tyrone Woodley lookalike. He's like, can you grow out your hair to look like Tyrone Woodley? I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so any, any, anytime they're going to give me something, I'm going to take the ball and I'm going to do it. So, yeah, wow. so I grew out my hair and then um, I met Kobe. And, and we were in the back and he told me, he's like, hey, um, I'm going to, we're going to do like a mock UFC fight, and you're going to be Tyquil Woodley, which is <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So <laughs> at that time, I was um, heavy, and I had a, a, my belly was bigger than it was before, um, than it is now. Mm-hmm. So then we went out there, we had a mock UFC fight. I took the kick and took the worst bump I could in my life. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the worst kick. <laughs> I, I threw the worst kick I ever thrown. <laughs> some, yeah. some horrible punches. <laughs> but it was fun. It was really fun. And Kobe was a cool guy. He's a, he's a cool guy. And I'm glad that he's getting the opportunities he's getting now, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. When they offered this to you, like, 
you, you literally just said yes. Like you didn't yeah, think like, oh, no, 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 just say yes. Like this guy's a UFC fighter. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, this guy's like the. I, I wanted him to <laughs> kick my head off. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't want that. You know, you have a family and stuff like that. No, yeah, man. <laughs> it was fun. See that for some other guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'd say I'll say yes to anything. Really? You want me to dress up like a boogeyman and they like, scare little kids? I'll do it. I don't care. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> You're a brave man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then you, Ron, um, Ron, you know, it was crazy because you did your own artist kind of Prince thing for a little bit with the wig. Yeah. And then you were Ron Kingsley, Ronald Kingsley, uh, spoiled, preppy guy, right? Yeah. Uh, how did these come about? Well, for me, like, when I first when I first started, I went through, like, a few gimmick ideas, and then, like, Ronald Kingsley came about when um, in a promo class... Like, it was a few weeks before my first, very first Battle Royal. I just cut this promo, and then Pat, like, generated that into the Spoiled Rich Kid kind of gimmick idea. Mm-hmm. I took that and ran with it. It's doing great for MJF. Max <laughs> 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 gets on me about that to this day. He's like, you stole my gimmick. I was just like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even realize. Because I was just so, like, tunnel vision naive at the time. I, I, was, I was 17 when I had my first match. Like, wow. And, you know, I, I kept going with that for a year, and then it was um, 2016, and then Pat came to me, he goes, hey, oh, wait, what's the name of the company? Oh, wow, I'm terrible. It's three letters? I don't remember who it was, but Pat was okay. like, um, it was Raven Dressler Rescue, and, and, and working with some other company. Okay. He goes, they have this idea for um, a new gimmick for you. Um, you would be in a battle royal, and the gimmick is inspired by David Bowie. Keep in mind, I'm 18 going on 19 at the time, but still, like, David Bowie's way before my time. Before my I time, don't, too. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know much about David Bowie. I barely know anything about David Bowie, but I'm like, all right, you know what? This is a great opportunity. I'll do it. So, that, I would say that week, I was so nervous. So, so nervous. Cause, just because, like, I didn't know what was going to hit me on this day. And then... I was doing good, too. Like, once Russell Pro started, I felt like I was getting more opportunity. I had a great match. My first singles match on the show against Chris Payne. And then the week after, I teamed with Bobby Wayward and Nikos Rikos against the Aesthetic Males. Which I felt like was kind of the killing off of the original Ronald Kingsley. Because, like, Beefcake just squashed me tons of times. I was just like, alright, this is a good way to write me off, I guess. And then the week after was the Battle Royal. Raven got there, I think, a couple hours before Doors. And I'm like, all right, here we go. He takes me into a room, they're recording, and he pulls out this orange morph suit from Party City. <laughs> this is your gear for tonight, kid. All right. <laughs> and then he pulls out this wig and face paint and paint my nails and this, that, and the third. And lo and behold, I'm wearing, I end up wearing the orange morph suit with my Ronald Kingsley tights over it. Um, purple netted gloves, uh, red fingernail paint, if I'm not mistaken. I think the rig, the wig was red and black, but they dyed it purple. And then they painted my face silver with, like, the lightning bolt over it to look like Zadie Stardust or whatever. And it was just the most ridiculous thing. But you won. (laughs) Yeah. And I just, like, I was, (laughs) I spent most of that day just, like, tucked away in, in the office at the side of the rec center, just, like, being dressed up and painted up and whatnot. And then, like, I had about ten minutes in the back for the boys to just look and laugh at me. <laughs> and then, like, Johnny Class, who was supposed to be the last guy, went in with me. He sees me from behind. He's like, hey, Ronnie, you want to call this? I turn around and he sees my face. He's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but it, it was um, noticeable, right? Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> I, was, I was just, like, kind of embarrassed. But, like, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this and I'm going to run with it. So I did everything that Raven wanted me to do, like, all the poses and just, like, I spent the Battle Royal just kind of, like, tucked away in the corner, just, like, in this weird pose, just, like, my arms crossed, and just watching everything happen. <laughs> and the whole point was just to act like an- androgynous and flamboyant and whatnot. Yeah. And then I just, like, spent most of the match tucked away in the corner, and then when it came down to it, I tossed Johnny Clash, and I won the match. <laughs> and I get the trophy. I'm like, all right, I gotta do some weird shit here. I just lick the freaking trophy. <laughs> <laughs> and walks out with it. You still it. have the trophy? I do, it's in my bedroom. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a great momentum. Talking about momentum, guys. Uh, pieces of collections. You guys have Wawa's to, of, to, of your own. Oh, yeah. yes, you I know? do. Let's talk about that. Sable of the Year. I mean, you've got some other ones. Um, <laughs> when you get those encouragements from, from WrestlePro, you know, how does that make you guys feel? 
it was awesome. Especially because that year, that was a year that there was so many stables. Yeah. You had the um, the Jackson 5. You had the Beach Bums. You had the uh, Aesthetic Males. It was just, it was a lot of um, stables. And for us to win Stable of the Year was just like, wow. Like, when they said our names, I wasn't even, I was in shock. I didn't, I didn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, there's no way it was us, you know? No way. Also, you had um, Espinicos, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. And those guys, they're awesome, too. So it was just like for us to win out of all of those guys, it was like insane. I was so shocked. Like the first thing I said when I got up there, because this was like end of December of 2017, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, if this award was being <clears throat> graded on a shoot like basis, we won our first match just two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> you have championship winning stables here. Yeah, we won. But okay. But no, we, we were just having so much fun at that point. I felt like we were on top of the world. But like, I still like, I did not expect to win. Like that really, that got me emotional. I was like, wow, I've come so far in a year's time. Yeah, We've sh- come so far in a year's time. I kind of shot myself in the foot because I said this was the best night of my life. Uh-huh. And my fiance was standing right there. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, forgot all about my proposal to her and everything. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, that, that's one way of looking at it, right? Yeah, so. I took her out to eat afterwards. <laughs> yeah, right? All forgiven, right? Yeah, she got a good steak. Yeah, you guys are still together. <laughs> 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 uh, you didn't do like the Kobe thing just go out and buy like the most expensive ring like you can oh get. no no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> this man's the biggest bargain hunter right now yes right? I am alright with you I love Dollar Tree <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my place to go oh <laughs> well, yeah you gotta be thrifty when you know, yeah exactly you, know, you got a wife and family on the way yeah you mm-hmm. understand man so um you know I have to ask you this cause this is pretty serious guys mm-hmm. how's Carl doing Oh, uh, Carl. Carl's dead. <laughs> oh, no, Carl. Yeah, Carl the, origi- the original Carl. Dr. Yeah, Carl. the original one is dead. But his son is, still lives on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, no plans of dropping Carl, like, off and, and you know, uh, not using it anymore. Um, well, I mean, we still use Carl. Carl's been... Okay, I'm, I'm going to spill the tea here, to, uh-huh. so to speak. Carl's been banned at Russell Crowe. Yeah. What? But, what happened to Carl? But we still take Carl elsewhere because Carl's still Malcolm's buddy. Yes. <laughs> Man, I was so devastated when you were crying and Alex sitting on your lap. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, he was, was so sad. It was yeah. a sad moment. Uh, and then, you know, Sean Dom, why'd you name it? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm going to let you tell the story of how we named So, <laughs> we came up with the name Carl because at the time... I had a mustache and I looked like Carl Winslow. Oh, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, and once once called that once the uh, megaphone died, we was like, oh, let's name the megaphone like oh uh, the new day named the uh, trombone. Oh yeah. So we came up with the name Carl. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't keep the mustache, right? That would have been cool, like the mall cop or something like that. Yeah. Right? Like. I, I've gone through so many stages. So. That's, that's what I love about Malcolm. Is every show he would just come in with a new facial hair. Like, I, 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 I don't even know what he's going to walk in with. I'm just like, this is so entertaining. Just keep doing it. One day I'm just going to come with dreads. <laughs> but yeah, I love I loved having a prop because I feel like, you know, you look at the great props in wrestling. Like Obviously, Jimmy Hart was the original holder of the megaphone. But, you know, I feel like you go back to the 80s and there was like, Rick Martel with the spray and, you know, Jake the Snake, even though... You know, yeah, snake pet, yeah everyone had whatever. a pet back then. Yeah. <laughs> well, we yeah. had a Jimmy, so... <laughs> that was our pet. <laughs> you know, talking about Jimmy, right, Jimmy uh-huh. Controversy, how was it working with him and what made, you know, him, uh, you know, depart? Jimmy's the crazy guy. <laughs> he, he was the intense one in the group. But hey. he was like... I don't know, he was fun. It was funny. Like, he had a different dynamic than all of us. And, like, for him, like, he had to take some time away because he has um, a lot of personal stuff going on. Mm. Like, I don't know if he's um, told anybody or says anything, but it's like, yeah, he has a lot of going on in his life. So he had to, like, step away for a while, you know, get everything situated. But I think he's going to come back, and I think, like, he's he's going to, he's finding his own, like, footing and finding his own thing, you know, outside of job security. Yeah, he's killing it on uh, SWF, I see him uh, when he's there, for sure. Um, you know, when when you get paired with him, right? You, know, you said intense. That's a great word yes. for it, right? I mean, how much is it, you know, because I've seen him, but for people who don't, 
how much is it really the the character and how much is it is the person? Because you probably spend more time with him than I have. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a wild boy. He could be a handful, you know. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. There's times like my patience is run thin. <laughs> really? Yes. But you know, there there's times also where all right, he's endearing. You know, he, he's he's still he's he's like my little shithead brother. <laughs> but there, there was there, there was one time when I was in. They went on a um to Monster Factory. Well, um, and I couldn't go because I had like things going on. And Jimmy talked to Ronnie. Ronnie didn't say one word to him during the whole ride. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy talked to him for two hours, was just having a conversation by himself. And I get a text message from Ronnie, like, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I've sat in... Okay, so, like, the way, the way the roster is, like, most of the guys live in North Jersey. Me and Jimmy live, like... Jimmy lives in Howell. I live in Brick. So we're, we're the only two that are, like, close to each All other. Right. So, there's been a lot of times where I'm just, okay, Jimmy, I'm riding with you. And it's just been me and Jimmy in a car, and for an hour and a half, I'm sitting there, and I can only take so much of just hearing him go on and on. And I'm, I, I've, there was one time we were going to old-time wrestling, and I tell this story, I said, well, on the way there, I had suicidal thoughts. On the way home, I had homicidal thoughts. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, my God. That bad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny because like the Beach Bums, they would vlog this stuff. You, you know, you should have done the same, right? Like we even tried vlogging a bit. I mean, I don't know. It's just it's difficult on show days because yeah. we just have a lot going on. Sure, yeah. absolutely. You know, um, you know, I pick it back up. Uh-uh. Yeah. You never know. You know, one thing I thought like this was my turning point for you guys. You know, when I was watching you guys progress, progress, and then you guys had this cornerstone match with with Mario Bocara, Falaba, Anthony Bones, and of course Dan Mop. You know, like these guys are really the you know, the name says it all for those guys, you yes. know, your bones. And, um, you know, I was like, this is a big spot because, you know, these guys, you know, they, they're known for training people. They're known for, um, you know, kicking ass like Dan Moth does, you know. Um, that was a serious match. Um, yeah, it, was, it was a really cool match. It was like, we got the opportunity to be in there where our coaches and, like, once we once you get into WrestlePro and once you get into, like, Cat New Jersey, the people that you see, that the top guys that you want to get in the ring with, is Mario Boker, uh, Falaba, um, Dan Moff, and Anthony Bowens. Like you want to get in there with your coaches, and like those are the top guys. Mm-hmm. And for us to get the opportunity to be in there in the state in one match where all four of them, it was just like, wow, this is insane. This is a really huge spot. It's like, yeah, we're getting beat up, but it's like they're giving us the opportunity to be in the ring with them, you know. Yeah. And actually, they trust us. Because in wrestling, you can trust each other with your bodies. And it's like, they trust us to be in the ring with them. And it's like, that's that's pretty... It was, a, it was awesome. Still one of my favorite matches to this day. And just like... I remember when we were about to go through the curtain. And I hear our music start playing. And I just hear screaming. Like, it wasn't... I wouldn't even say it was heat or even cheering. I just heard screaming. Like, the whole rec center exploded. I had to look back to see, like, this is our theme song, right? <laughs> and then we went out, and it's just, like, this big ovation for everybody. And I remember just the crowd was so crazy that night. Like, for the whole time that we were out there, just... And they reacted to everything so amazingly. And just, like, to Malcolm's point, even afterward, for, like, those guys to come up and say, we had a lot of fun working with you, I was just like, wow. That's crazy. Because, like, I've been looking forward to wrestling you since I got here. Yeah. That's cool. I don't know if I would actually call that music, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned that, because Malcolm and I are actually, you know, coming out with some new entrance music very soon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, we're working on, um, this, we're always, like, getting trying to get better and upgrading, so now it's like, we got a new look, we're going to have a new sound, we're going to have a new attitude. It's like, everything with job security, like, what you know is going to change and everything's going to get better and it's going to be new. Like going into the end of this year until the beginning of the next year, it's going to be totally, we're going to be the same job security, but like even totally different, like even better, bigger and better. Like this is going to be a big upgrade for what's coming next for job security. And it's sure. going to be 
Free, it's awesome. I'm I'm excited for what's coming next for us. It's a big transition period, and I feel like that's that's the key in wrestling. Like you, okay, we've been a team for two and a half years now. It's, it's time to evolve, and you just keep evolving, and that's what keeps you fresh while still maintaining your original identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. You know, like the iPhone, you got to update it every yeah. couple of months. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. So yeah, I understand that. I think the fans kind of will appreciate that too. I mean. Uh, that's kind of cool that that you guys are putting in the effort to to stay the same but be different. You know, yes, it's kind of yes. cool. It's really cool to see you guys do that. Um, you know, it's crazy because I'm I'm going through my notes here and you guys have had you know many battles with the Beach Bums, but they've had many different partners from from Hot Dog to mm-hmm. Swaggle. Yes. I mean, I mean, you name it. You guys have faced those guys in various different uh, different opponents uh, teaming with them. How do you prepare for the other guy that you don't know? That wild card factor, right? Like that swaggle, that you know, somebody else. Like how do you get how do you get that mindset like, okay, I know these guys are I know what to expect with these guys, but it's that little wild card in the back of your mind, right? Uh tape study. All right. Just, just watch a lot of hot dog matches. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a lot of hot dogs, you know. Just spend a lot of time with some hot dogs. You need, yeah. You need just um Watch a lot of WWE Network, see what Swaggle's doing, and just tape study. I don't, I'm, I'm being honest, I don't think we were prepared for Swaggle. No, we, yes. <laughs> we got our asses bitten, if yes. I recall. Yes. <laughs> uh, but Stark, though, like, I've, I've, we've been around with him a few times, and, like, I feel like we got that hot dog figured out. All right. You know, um, you guys have a preference of hot dogs, like Hebrew National, Nathan's, you know, um... No, I eat anything. No, as long as it's cheap. I, I like greater value man because it's cheap. <laughs> All right, I pay a dollar. <laughs> All right, that's a. Little, I don't know if I agree with that, one, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> it saves money. I love it. <laughs> I have to go kosher. <laughs> All right, guys. So on your downtime, you guys are two different people. Um, uh-huh. I'll start with you, um, uh, Malcolm. What do you like to do on your on your off time? Is there like a passion of yours that people may not know you have? I don't know. Just like hanging out, watch, play a lot of um games, like maybe rest, like WWE Two K, or I will play um NBA or NFL. Like I play video games, but then I I love to spend time with my fiance. You know, like um all my down downtime, just watch movies, hang out with her, and, you know, spend some family time. Sure. Are you? Uh, what, what's your favorite movie, man? My favorite movie right now is The Avengers. All right. I, I love superhero movies, shows. Like, any superhero movie show or, like, cartoon is that's on, I'm watching. Like, yeah. I've seen all, like, the DC shows and, like, every episode. I've been wa- binge-watched all the Marvel, Netflix series. Like, I, I, just, I love them. <laughs> when you play, like, basketball or baseball, right, on, on the systems, who's some of your teams that you use? Oh... Uh, Right now, because I'm I'm a Colts fan. I see that you're a Dallas fan, but no, I'm a Jets fan. You're a Jets fan. Hey, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> Let's be miserable here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Colts fan, and the All main right. reason I became a Colts fan is because I everybody was loving Tom Brady at the time. Okay, and I was like, oh, I like this Peyton Manning guy, and Peyton Manning, like he's he was good. He's a good quarterback. And they were far enough away from New York where I could say I like them and not have an argument with anybody. <laughs> because if you say you like um, an Eagles, if you like uh, the yeah, Eagles, sure. or if you like anybody like that's around here, or if you like the Patriots, it ends up into an argument. Yeah. And I didn't want no arguments. I just wanted a good team <laughs> <laughs> that would, might make it to the Super Bowl, and I could just enjoy without an argument. All right, that's fair enough. And... uh Ronald, same question to you, man. What do you like to do um, when you're not wrestling? I a lot of time spent watching wrestling. <laughs> okay. Just watching wrestling. Um, I also like, yeah, you know, a lot of time watching TV. Honestly, uh, right now, well, I uh, love Impractical Jokers. That's probably my favorite show. Oh yeah, oh, I, I yeah, love yeah Impractical that's great. Jokers. Um, Arrow in the Flesh just ended. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I know those are two of Malcolm's favorite shows too. Yes. Um, those shows. Uh, right now, let's see. What did I just finish watching on Netflix? I can't even remember. That's horrible. Uh, I'm watching the act on Hulu currently. I watched that. Yeah, that was really it's wild. Yeah, you know the story, like the real story, not just like the, what they did. Mm-hmm. It's the craziest thing how they were able to, like, how this like if people don't know it, so this mother like played the whole community saying that her daughter was sick and they all and she went along with this, um, right. you know, this illness that but. 
I don't think she knew to the extent how bad it was. Like, she knew she could walk and stuff like that. And, and when they would go out in public, she would be in a wheelchair and she had a feeding tube. But the girl could eat and the girl could, uh, you know, she was a normal, healthy girl. But she, in her mind, she was sick and she ended up killing her mother. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And she ran and escaped with her, her boyfriend at the time. And, she, and they caught her because a couple of Facebook messages and, you know, tracked her on the stuff. But yeah, they were getting money from like Disney and all this other stuff, and wow. you know all these celebrities were giving money, and it's just a crazy story. How, you know, yeah, it's, that's a great show. Very surreal. Um, outside of that, I'm also like I like I said, I just graduated college. I'm a big sports fan. Okay. I had a minor in sports co- uh, communication. Um, right now, um, I'm doing freelance sports writing, which just started, just graduated, obviously. Um, I just got hired as a brand ambassador for Explorer Resorts. Okay. Uh, which is more of a marketing position, but, you know, work right out of college, I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, that's that's the ideal situation. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Who are your teams, by the way? Oh, um, sadly, a diehard Jets fan. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm a Yankees fan, and um, I'm a casual hockey fan. I root for the Rangers. Uh, not the Devils? No. <laughs> yeah. All New York, all yeah, New York teams. They have they have cheerleaders. <laughs> I didn't know that really. Yeah, oh, I went to a couple games and like since when? Uh well, like I went a couple of years ago, right? And then like they have like these dancers, right? They are like just dancing with the devil mascot, like these beautiful are, women. Are they on the ice? Yeah, they were on the like yeah like on like the carpet and stuff like that, and they were dancing like with him like with with the fans and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is why I'm a devil fan. I'm about to see on YouTube because I know a couple <laughs> of them have failed. <laughs> I want to see how many have fallen. Yeah, like, the devil I'm gonna, yeah. I'm probably gonna have to check that out because tickets to Madison Square Garden are ridiculously expensive. So I would probably opt to go to uh, Prudential Center, yeah. which I have done. I, I've been to a couple of um, Devils games, and they were yeah. awesome. They were really really fun. Yeah, you know what's funny? Like my friend and I, we. We try to go when we go to a hockey game. Like the last couple ones, just by accident, have been like the Canucks. So we just made like a pretend feud between the Canucks and the Devils. And now we just look for like those games. We don't care about the rest of the games. And I'm a Devils fan, but I'm like, if I'm gonna go, I want to see the Devils and the Canucks. Just because like the last like four times we went, that was the only team they played. And I'm like, this is a rivalry just between the two of us. Like, yeah. Only us know about this. <laughs> and we came up with like storylines, like why this is like. <laughs> Right, so now like there's more an incentive to go to the like, and they're cheap, right? Like the tickets are not that expensive, but now we have more incentive to go other than cheap tickets. Um, you know, like man, like that goalie was looking at us. Tomorrow. How can you tell? We're in the stands. You know, we can't tell how the goalies look. They have these masks on and stuff like that. Next so, thing you know, you got to do wrestling chants. Yeah, <laughs> when I, you start the rivalry. This is awesome. <laughs> Fight forever. <laughs> Hockey forever. <laughs> it's great because I've been to Mets games where they win or where they won and like people are doing the Daniel Bryan they're like, yes, yes, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. And like yeah. and happening in other sports, it's crazy how wrestling can, you know, bring people together as well as tear people apart. Like, you, you love know. saying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so guys, you know, now that we know a little bit about you, um, you know, if you, who, if you guys had a pick, right, who, who would be each member of the represent the impractical jokers on your team, right? Like, if, who would be who? Uh, who? <laughs> I'll let you go first. Who, who'd be Mur? Mur might be me. You'd be Mur? I think. <laughs> I don't know. Wait a minute. <laughs> really? Wait. Oh, let me think about this. I think Alex would be Sal. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's, that's the one I first thought of. Mm. I think I will be. Um... Q. Q? No, I think I'm going to be... Joe? Joe. I Joe, be Joe, Joe. has a body type, but yeah. like... Joe's also the craziest. I feel like... Well, think... Okay, who do you think Jimmy would be? Because I was going to say Jimmy would be Joe. Yeah, yeah Jimmy probably would be Nothing Joe. Nothing phases Joe. Uh, Alright, I'm thinking Unmer. Alright. Alex would be Sal. Malcolm's Q. Uh, and Jimmy is, is Joe. Joe. You guys have a favorite prank? My favorite... I think off the top of my head... The hardest I left was when they punished Murr, they made him dress up as a vampire, and then they threw him into the freaking gospel choir. <laughs> like, that was, that was the most random thing they could have come up with, and I was cracking up. Yeah. I, I love the one when he was sky... Oh, they threw him out of the plane, he skydived. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. 
I like well, I have to like one more of those like when they did Tamur right and they made him like get Novocaine in both sides of his mouth. <laughs> oh yes! Oh my god! He's like this braised beef is amazing and he can't. <laughs> he, like he doesn't can And then um, the other one was when um, anything I think with Sal right and they put Sal like on stage and he's supposed to like. Oh, sorry, he's in the crowd, and they're doing, like, a poetry reading or reading a book or something like that, and it's like, his my phone's phone ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he gets up, and he's like, I have to take this. <laughs> Especially yeah. being from Staten Island, I'm a huge mark for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm just like, man, I hope I just run into them somewhere, and I'm like, on the show. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny, because uh, the first time I saw them, I was in Mexico, and it was in Spanish, right? I'm on oh. vacation on spring break, so I'm like, we're watching this, we're, we're just cracking up, my buddy and I, we're in the room together. You know, we're lounging from the whole day of drinking, and we're watching this, and I'm like, wow, like, this is a pretty good show. This, I wish it was in America. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, I don't even notice they're in New York and stuff like that. I come home, like, a, a couple months later, I'm watching this, and I'm like, yo, these are the guys from Mexico. They speak English. <laughs> Man, but it's funny, you know, people in Mexico, they, they can enjoy it too, because yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's, so, it's so stupid, those guys. And that's, <laughs> it's just, like, um, I'll tell you guys later, but yeah, I mean, so enjoyable, those guys, for sure. Yeah. You guys ever use those guys as maybe inspiration now for, for promos and stuff like that, or do you guys have, like, that kind of relationship? Did you ever want that kind of relationship between the four of you at one point? Uh, we kind of have that relationship, like... We'll we'll group chat and talk to each other and mm-hmm. like we'll come up with bounce around silly ideas and like it was rare times that we ever said no to a, a silly idea you know yeah like we were sixty nine and on the beach <laughs> so, <laughs> no, exactly, exactly, no wait what's I had I had this guy on top of me in a missionary position yeah like, yeah. like wait I think they did a drop to hold where you landed on me yeah or maybe you slipped or, no 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 you slipped onto me uh-huh. and like we're we're in like crowded Bradley Beach in freaking the middle of July and I just got Malcolm laying on top of me we're both dressed in all black I'm just like flailing underneath him I was like oh my god sure you know yeah. as guys it's also been kind of crazy because you guys have had some serious wins you know uh, you know, when you guys look back at some of the teams that you've beaten you know what's next for you guys you know what's next for you you know is it the Russell Pro Tag Team titles is it the WOW Tag Team titles is it you know any other promotions <laughs> tag team titles? What's the ultimate goal for this team right now? And then individually, what what are your own goals? I think it's working too, like getting the tag, the getting the tag titles. Yes. And I think at this time, it's like we're on the cusp of something really, really great, mm-hmm. where we're gonna like evolve into something that like is manageable, that it's good enough that we could be tag champions anywhere. You know, like we could go to a promotion and hold the tag titles and like be like the top tag team at that promotion so i feel like that's the goal right now is like showing these promotions that we are like a great tag team and that we are like you put us against anybody and we'll have a good a great match i feel like malcolm and i are at that point where we just want to prove like hey we are this damn good and we want to just keep getting out there and just keep expanding where we're going um, like, I really, I really, like, we haven't even had, I don't think, a two-on-two tag team championship match anywhere. So, I want, I really want that opportunity for us. But, you know, like, like I said earlier, we're in a big transition period right now. And I think, you know, we're heading in the right direction and we got something good going here. Awesome. And, uh, one last question before we get to your guys' social media accounts and where people can follow you. One tag team each that you guys want to face in the future realistically or yeah realistically or and you know, well one realistically <laughs> and one like this is my target team my target team will be the lucha brothers okay that's they that's like the ultimate team that i would love to get in the ring with penta and phoenix like i think that would be awesome <laughs> yeah it would be and like a team that i would love to feud with like in the near future is team espana like, those Ooh. guys don't get the credit that they deserve, sure. but I think a few with us and them will be, like, awesome. I think we could prove that to companies that don't even, like, look at WrestlePro or, like, don't even, like, notice. Like, I think we could prove to them that, like, these, like we're, the, we're good guys. Like, we could go to around the country and have this feud and, like, like open eyes, you know? Sure, and what a good tag team to pick. Uh, you know, I kind of second that one for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> 
I think I want to face the ugly ducklings because they just like a lot of look like a lot of fun. Oh yeah, right. I think I met them like maybe once or twice, but like I want to like I think we could have a lot like another like gimmickish tag team to so to speak, you know. I think the gymnasty boys also come to mind because they were along those lines too. Oh, gymnasty, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised um, you guys didn't say sent to slaughter. <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I I would love that. Oh. That would. It would, bear be a, country, it would be bear country, bear, bear country, yeah, yeah, right? definitely. There's bear so country. many teams I could list. Like I can't do justice. Like, now it seems like the tag divisions everywhere, like on the independence, is just rising. Like yeah. everything, like all these teams, is like comes to mind. It's like we could be paired up with all these teams, and it'll just be awesome. Sure. And then your fantasy team that you want to your target team. Let's call them that. The handicapped heroes. The handicapped heroes. Like. All right. Okay, so when I when I first got into <laughs> wrestling, like Zach, I really like it was SmackDown two thousand three, and I was just so hooked on Zach Yao, and I was like, this dude is incredible. He's doing all this stuff on one leg, and like when I met him for the first time, I just so marked out so hard. I was like, oh yeah, my yeah. god, and I was like, Greg Iron's incredible in his own right. Don't get me wrong, sure, but like the the little kid in me just wants to be in the ring with Zach Yao, and like to have Malcolm alongside me against Gowan and Iron, that would be beyond words. So incredible. Well, I hope that happens, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys progress. And uh, where can people get you guys on social media? My Twitter is at the Ronnie Moses uh, on Instagram as well, uh-huh. and the job security accounts are at Job Security Pro on Twitter and Instagram. And on Instagram, I'm the Malcolm Moss. Then you can just find me on uh, Facebook as Malcolm Moss. Sure, and uh, you know, guys, thank you so much for taking out the time, giving people the insight about job security and. Uh, the upgrade and the coming out soon. I can't wait to see what you guys do and progress. Um, yeah, we definitely got to do this again, like maybe next year once. Oh yeah, we'll see yeah. Where, how we progress. <laughs> yeah, man, you guys sitting here with the Russian <laughs> Pro Tag Titles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah well, let's hope so, man. Let's hopefully that that is the case for sure. You know what would be cool though if we had like maybe um, a Beach Bones um, job security reunion. Podcast. Uh, uh, yeah. If we yeah, get that, that going, that would be fun. Oh man, that'd be kind of dope. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. We just gotta find where Brody is. So I don't know. Oh man, and Alex, right? Because yeah, <laughs> they went all over. together. <laughs> poor, poor Freddie's gonna be in here in a body cast. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully, Freddie does recover soon if he's listening. Uh, but... You gotta fly TJ back in from England. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, he had uh, Aaron Bradley, right? I mean. Like I know they've been feuding at, at other oh, places. That's right. Yeah, and Aaron that's Bradley right. came and attacked him. You know, uh, yeah. So a speedy recovery to TJ as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, hopefully those that that attack wasn't as brutal as it looked. Uh, I, th- I think we've done worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hopefully it was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your opinion. I will stay neutral. <laughs> and for us, this has been Wrestling IQ One Hundred and One. Of course, you can follow us on all platforms. At Wrestling IQ 101, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You've been listening to us right here on YouTube and the B Plus player across all platforms. And uh, guys, thank you again so much for being here. And we'll, we'll see you, you soon. You want to say attack one? Thank you for having us. And remember, this is not just a job, it's security. security.